Hello everybody, and today I want to show you a really cool thing that I think I just discovered. Uh, I'm probably not the first one to discover it, I'm just probably the only stupid one that I couldn't find out on YouTube. But anyway, um, here I'm just going to put some items inside this chest, and as you can see they're popping into the dropper. I'm going to activate this clock. And so this dropper is sending items into the nether portal. Let me do a quick tick warp. Now I think, yeah, the dispensers, uh, it dispensed everything. I'm just gonna wait for the tick warp to be over, just so that I can show you that the chunks probably did unload in the nether already. Okay, the tick warp just finished, and now I'm gonna fly over, so you can see my render distance, I can only see that one portal, okay? So, I'm just gonna fly along here, just some random minecarts. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna keep flying here. Alright, over here, and ta-da, the redstone torches ended up in this chest. Alright guys, so now let me actually show you what you have to do on the nether side. And it is um, quite a lot of effort to make this, so pretty much what you need is one of these things every chunk. Now let me quickly go over to a online whiteboard so I can show you what's going on. Alright guys, so here we are in an online whiteboard, and this is pretty much just showing a schematic of what chunks are loaded by the portal loader. So around the portal chunk, we have a 3x3 three three of chunks. So this is like, um, kind of like that. So these are just like chunk boundaries. So we have 3x3 three three of chunks that are entity loaded, 5x5 five five of chunks that are, that are redstone loaded, and the rest of the chunks, so 7x7 seven seven of chunks, are going to be lazy loading. Now the only chunks that process entities are the empty processing chunks, obviously, so we need this, these chunks, the chunks in this 3x3, three three. and the reason is that the portal loaders, how they work is that they send some sort of entity through the portal, and that loads chunks. And pretty much what essentially we need is a portal loader to be somewhere around here so we just have a straight line f of entity loaded chunks, so that we could have portal loaders there. Um, well, the portal loaders make the entity loaded chunks, but we want a straight line of any kind of loaded chunks that can send items through hoppers. And unfortunately, we have to have one of these portal loaders every chunk, because as you can see, there's only a 3x3 three three of chunks around this portal loader. So if we place a portal loader, say here, or here, or here, it wouldn't get loaded, so it wouldn't work because we need entities for the portal loader to work. So that means we can only place another portal loader in here, and that means we have to place them every chunk. That's enough talk, let's go back to Minecraft and I'll show you how the whole thing works. Alright, so I just joined in here, and so you can see pretty much how the portal loaders work. Uh, don't pay attention to these comparators, that was just for testing so I could see the items being shot through uh, the hoppers. But pretty much what we have is every chunk one of these portal loaders, and here we just have a comparator taking an output over here, some delay so that it's like once this um, hoppers go through here so that the portal loader doesn't turn off prematurely, although I'm not exactly sure if you need this delay, this was just, just testing and it worked. Yeah, technically you shouldn't need that delay, um, but yeah, I'll fix that later. But anyway, what we have is just portal loaders every chunk and outputs from the hoppers and turning on the portal loaders. And at the end here we just have this and a sort of hopper, um, I mean dropper clock and shooting the items back through here. And in my opinion, what this is the most useful for is stuff like on SciCraft when they have a bunch of witch farms that are spread over thousands of blocks in the overworld, tens of thousands of blocks, and you want to get them all to essential storage, and this is what it's useful for. By the way, these posters, they're only here so that um, it prevents lag from the hoppers, because otherwise hoppers, they create a bit of lag, because they try to suck an item in, but the composters, they're they're like uh, something that doesn't allow them to suck items in. As you can see, the hopper won't suck an item in, it doesn't even check. Let me just quickly rebuild this, so uh, let's see if it actually needs that um, delay. By the way, you might be thinking redstone dust, that's super laggy, but um, most of the time this um, hopper is only going to have an item in it, like one item, so this will only be at signal strength 1, pretty much. 
And a good thing is about this sort of design is uh, while I'm just finishing up this, I just want to mention that this is like you can make a junction so you can have something over there and the same sort of system popping in items into this hopper, say, and it will continue loading this whole thing because again we take outputs at every every chunk. Alright, so I just built up the new system. Let's see if it works. Uh, I'm just going to quickly show you. There is nothing inside of this chest. Alright, as you can see, nothing in the chest, nothing in uh, any of the hoppers or anything like that. Nothing inside of any of those. And I'm going to just kind of speed up the video here as I'm traveling over there. Just so that there wasn't any cuts so that you can see, I didn't put any items inside of that chest. Let me do a quick tick warp uh, so that you can be sure that all the chunks in another unloaded. Alright, that was the whole tick warp, and now I'm just gonna put some items in here. And now turn on this clock. And I'll do another quick tick warp, this time maybe for a bit longer. Okay, now that, I'm just going to wait for the tick warp to be finished, just so that I can be sure everything went through there. But anyway, let's just hop on through here, and we can see the redstone torches are in the chest that's brilliant so that actually works exactly like that and unfortunately this I'm not sure if this is feasible for actual survival minecraft because on an uh, overworld side you would have to build one of these for every single chunk you want to cover in the nether and but it's not that complicated, but you if you're building it for thousands of blocks, I'm not sure how feasible that is. Maybe if you're on a server and you have a bunch of people that have just way too much time to work on stuff like this, maybe it's feasible, but I'm not sure about it. But anyway, that's going to be it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, make sure to leave a like, and you want to see more stuff like this, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye!